This is the full VOD of the matchup between BLG and PSG. Let's dive into the picks and bans. So far, where they will peak at well.
always come out safe, but on the they're not and opposite side, they're actually just gonna go back towards the MF. So I already called it a big AoE. And I don't know if Betty wants to answer with his own AoE. Make the biggest of, of clusters we're gonna have. <laughs> these these team fights will be a big bang for sure. Can we just get another play by play on the desk yeah. instead of one of you guys for the team fights? Okay. To say, look at the explosions. Oh, there's the Ezreal. Okay, so that was the other, you know, part part of the AD carries I was mentioning earlier. Uh, about you can try and go for the survival tactic in these cases. And Betty is a very good Ezreal, has invested so much time into this champion. Um, I will say too, because we actually were casting this series uh, at MSI and the same setup was there where Betty gave an interview with PentaQ where he was talking about Elk and specifically Elk on the Lucian is the AD carry that everyone wants to be, you know, aspires to be, has so much respect. For, for Elkin on as a bottom lane. Um, and he really showed up and, and proved himself against kind of his, you know, heroes or players that he looks up to in that series. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to the part two to this and kind of the follow up. And I mean, Betty will also be very familiar with them, right? Played on RNG, Rogue Warriors, back when Elk was still Jomong. So there's a lot of history both in the LPL, now at the international stage as well. And I think having this Ezreal at least gives him a chance to try and like arcane shift out of this bullet cyclone of Weirdine that's going to be coming his way <laughs> on BLG side. So he can have a major performance coming into this game if he's able to keep himself safe. Kind of a bullet hell experience for both the yeah. carries <laughs> in this game. For BLG, currently sitting at one and two, performing well below expectations so far at Worlds 2024. PSG looking to Add another name to the list of teams they have defeated over the years. BLG, well, PSG were very close to doing it against BLG at MSI. Can they go one step better here? Best of three for a spot in Paris, for a spot in the quarterfinals as we go on to the Rift for the third time today. So much goes along with this series as well with um, you know, the interview and, and Maple kind of referencing that this might be his retirement year. Such a legendary player on the international stage. And he's been given the pick of the tournament. Um, that pick of the tournament, the Yone, of course, uh, was not free. Did come at the cost of giving over Knight's Aurora, but uh, definitely will be looking uh, at Maple, especially with the support of a Sejuani jungle. Yep. At his back to make some big plays. And we'll be looking at the mid lane, but you guys need to remember to look and log into your Riot account at lollysports.com and watch Worlds Live to earn exclusive Worlds emotes, icons, and capsules. Get yourself all those little trinkets, all those little toys. I know I'm a bit of a completionist myself. If I see something shiny on the ground, got to pick it up. I've never met more of a grinder than you. I'm not going <laughs> to second you have look, something man. in your sights. My, my Diablo it's 4 character would be like Paragon 200. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> It's okay, please, Rob, please <laughs> yeah. validate me. No, I look, got, this, I got is, the this is actually an intervention. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't realize. <laughs> I was sick. Uh, BLG setting up down towards the bottom side. Did look for a moment like they might lane swap, but instead they were just trying to get bush control in the top side. Often we do see a ward placed when you do this. I think Knight may have places, uh, placed his ward in that bush. Actually, he's gone over towards the razor beak. So what you often want to do is, if you're playing melee into ranged, is you want to try and get a ward into one of the bushes to make it harder for the range to drop minion aggro in that top lane. Uh, and it looks like Azure should be able to continually harass that as Bin and him trade towards the top side. I think he should be relatively okay as Bin still to get pushed, just thanks to that uh, Counter-Strike. Yeah. It works out very well. We saw it from BB on the opposite side in the last game, where even with the Nari, he couldn't really do too much. So Bin, going to be fine. And okay, Woody, not quite been able to get the crash down there. But with the push on top and also slowly starting to come through, I'd imagine, in mid lane as well, I think you're going to be fine as Shun to move up towards this top side and contest for Scuttle, which is really where you want to be is this Wukong, because hitting level 6, getting out onto the map as quick as possible with that ultimate is so crucial to this success. Yeah, one of the things that we saw actually a decent amount more, I feel like, from BLG when they actually put Wei in instead of Shun was more attention towards Bin and topside, and he is on his legendary Jax. Um, but, uh, of course, with both of those junglers sharing scrims with the team and playing this whole time, uh, very could be evened up by Shun. Wukong, notoriously looking for the level six, though, so you would generally, just on paper, give the early ganks a bit more potency uh, on the side of the Sejuani until the level six comes in and the Wukong a uh, bit more scaling and damage threat, of course. And that was the thing on the upside when we saw um, Shun coming in, he kind of put a lot of focus on towards that bottom side. 
for a lot of their games, especially when you look at like their series against LNG and that. So I think for BLG, it's going to be a case of trying to see if they can have that access to the bottom side. I don't think they can really get Woody as Woody's I sorry, Betty, I should say, because Betty has that arcane shift, but Woody will be way more vulnerable to that sort of gank, especially with the lockup that Anku provides. So I think BLG more gonna be looking towards say the level six with those potential ganks, but also boy grubs as they start to come through that second round. See Jun kind of passing down towards that bottom side to get the Scuttle Crab. Junja has taken control over the top side. Bin had to TP back as he was harassed by Azure. Not too much surprising in this early game. The MF managing to get push into a Ezreal lane. It's kind of to be expected. She has a lot of damage in the early game and obviously more as <laughs> she gets towards that Bloodthirster too. Yeah, definitely a fearsome lane there with the Leona. Uh, of course, worth noting that the Leona there on is taking the exhaust for the Kennen later on into the game but also serves its purpose in those all-ins if our junglers do find themselves you know, ganking the bottom lane and trying to uh, play off that wave management. Uh, definitely does kind of put a stop to some of those very, very heavy all-ins. Just keep my eyes on what Chun is up to, because, oh, hang on, Ben. Ben gets the Counter-Strike. Can look for the Empower in a couple of seconds as well. Azure deciding he has to flash away. Doesn't want to be hit with a lamppost from Ben. That's pretty crucial though, because you yep. like having those solo laners hit six just in time for like Void Grub fights or anything like that. So not having that, I sorry, not having that flash available for that combo is gonna be a bit sad. Flash in onto on here. Doesn't have the exhaust in a flash of his own. Zenith plays onto Junja to try and get himself away. Exhaust on the Sejuani, not the target you want. Jun trying to join the fray. Elk having to cleanse flash away as Jun is now caught with a shadowing strike and PSG. Find first blood in the bot lane and will force Jun away. Nice job by Woody to get the crash down on towards on. Trying to base in. PSG hoping that Shun would be in position, but Junja's already there. And the value at this early stage for the Sejuani getting multiple CC chains off is just perfect for PSG. Yeah, the timing was so nice too, with Junjia heading down, finish up the Gromp, and the flash from Woody. He has had so many set up plays for some of the biggest moments for PSG. The first blood acquired for PSG, and in the area that they want it, yeah, the Sejuani is the one to actually get uh, the final hit because On did a pretty good job of trying to use Jinjia as an exit, um, but still very happy to actually cash in and very nice gold lead for PSG in the opener. And a lot of that control that PSG got in their series against BLG at MSI was through that bottom lane. Yeah. So starting to see a repeat performance as Knight in trouble. Fate Seal going in. Knight's going to be able to jump away. Can use the Between Worlds to dash out, but that's an ultimate for ultimate exchange in the mid lane. You'll take that though as PSG, because Knight way less threatening with that ultimate down at these early stages. Also the fact that you get mid push means you get to move over straight away towards these Void Grubs. And look at Shun, he's not even close to that level six and being in the same boat. So he's a little bit off, has to finish out this wave, which means BLG not really in a position to contest. Yeah, for sure. PSG just gonna be able to get these Void Grubs no problem. And if you look at the domino effect of some of those plays, Guess what a mid prial for Yone kid turn into? It's more ganks on bottom side. Junjia could go down back bottom side uh, as well as possible Maple Room. So there, there are a lot of good things building up towards consecutive plays since not only On used summoner spells in the bottom side, but it was also Elk in their attempts to evade. Also just putting Knight on edge a little bit, by right? making him burn his ultimate is so important because Knight has so consistently been a stalwart of the LPL. I think if people only follow International League of Legends, they won't really see Knight as this dominant character. But he's a five-time LPL champion, tied first in LPL championships. He's been at Worlds four times. And although the furthest he's ever made is semi-finals, he's widely regarded as one of, if not the best mid laner in the world, depending on the time of year. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely the best mid laner in the LPL and is the kingmaker in the LPL. He's been in the last six LPL finals. He has won four in the last of the last finals and is now starting to tie people for most uh, LPL titles with the likes of Xiaohu and these guys. Like, adding a Worlds title to this guy just makes him the most decorated LPL player of all time. And it feels like such a weird thing to talk about when they're a thousand gold behind PSG in the one-two matches, right? Because this is not where BLG expected to be. It's kind of where PSG expected to be, is Betty should be able to go away here. The Zenith Blade going in, Betty trying to trade back onto Elk. On, went in with the Zenith Blade himself, doesn't have the exhaust up. Now he's taking the Magnus Storm coming out as well. And what is On doing? Looking for the engage, think, thinking Shun would back him up, but he was left to his own devices. And in the end, he's left to his demise. 
Well, the thing is, one of the players that has been involved in some of these world's winning rosters was Junja, and he's keeping it going. Goes in with the Glacial Prism. The cleanse was available for Alchemy. Holds it. The bullet time opens up. Shun going in with the Cyclone, looking to make a temper. Still take one. Junja falls. Woody trying to get the CC onto Shun to keep Betty alive. Shun holds it and dies in the end. Try to flash away, but Betty puts him in the dirt. And PSG, the reason they keep forcing on this bottom side is because all the setup work that they had done, all of these extra advantages going into it. So even though Shun is there to cover on the first attempt, and it actually takes the second attempt for them to finally get a counter kill, it is still so much more work for PSG because they blew all the bot lane summoners uh, first time around. And then as you can see, Shun Jae could just kind of walk right by Shun and they punish on again. He was still only level four to Woody's six. Like massive, massive difference. Like, there's no way you can ever fight the even numbers. And it's just by the skin of their teeth, like, what HP was that, like 30 maybe, yeah. <laughs> left on Elk? That it didn't even go catastrophically wrong for BLG? So while in the end you're kind of like celebrating Shun got one counter kill at least, it is still so overwhelmingly into the game plan of PSG uh, for them to continue to play around here. And we'll see if there are, there are extra knock-on effects if, uh, you know, Maple becomes unleashed as well. Well, the thing is, the knock-on effect is Aj has had a free lane to himself, and he's been doing a great job against Bane. You can see a 600 gold lead opening up thanks to CS and the turret plates he's been able to get. And now, when you start to look at things like dragons that are still up and available, the El the Void Grubs in a minute's time, Aj is in prime position to be an outright carry for PSG Talon. BLG need to find some way back into this game or PSG Talon can just run away with this. Just look at the bottom of the screen. It's like a good library. Red, 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 red. You know, it's so strong for PSG right now. Gold leads in every single lane. BLG trying to get mid control so they can fight over this Scuttle Crab and the Grubs that have come up in 40 seconds time. But PSG are using the time to take a Drake for themselves. They know they can then go across and even try to catch Knight out, who'll get the Blast Cone, but Ginger's gonna follow him across. Knight still has the Flash, has the ult, has the dash with the Weirding. Caught out with the Glacial Prism. True Shot Barrage coming out as well, and Knight now has to invest that Summoner to escape the clutches of Ginger. So much damage could have come through, and that's a key Summoner spell again. They still have three people on bottom side. You see Leona coming to hover, but Knight just has to stand and watch. Look, all these minions dying to the tower. He's waiting for On to come escort him into safety. But another very smart uh, play here from PSG to cut off more resources from the hands of BLG. So many minions dying. And Funnel Betty, who has just been such a monumental carry for this PSG roster as well. Like, after he we left the LPL and came in towards the PCS. This guy was an absolute beast, and he's only continued to show up for this roster. Now that he's on 2-0, and oh, he's going to have this Triforce completed off of the three set as well. He's in prime position to play out of his mind to try and carry PSG across the line. Plus, again, you don't have a huge amount of lockup that can really keep him in check. He has the cleanse for anything that On has, then has the Arcane Shift and a Flash for so much of what BLG are trying to bring to the table. Exactly. One of the few AD carries that doesn't completely pull out their hair and scream that an Aurora is on the enemy team. It's true. <laughs> Actually has some options, some playability. Plus, as you can see, PSG obviously targeting Knights over and over, multiple ganks towards him, uh, you know, catching him in transition, constantly trying to burn the flash, take away resources from that Aurora, make sure it does not become a nightmare for them later on. The one they're going to have to watch over these next few minutes. Still a while before the next Drake, and we saw Grubs exchanged for denying Knight a couple of waves in the bot side. So it's three Grubs apiece for both these teams, but a TP coming in by PSG. They know Knight has no flash. Wait in the darkness in the tri bush. Will Knight expect it? Mako here to catch the wave. On and Shun on their way across as well. You can see the ward placed there. Ginger and Woody looking for the invade towards the red buff. They are pushing mid, they are pushing bot. Betty here to join the battle. Maple gets the first move, can look for a flank here with the Fate Seal, dashes forward, unbinds his soul on down to half HP. The Solar Flare goes in with a bullet time and that's two locked up. And Woody's the first to fall. Maple was distracted by Knight. Betty dashing back in between worlds. Knight can look for more. Maple dives in with a Fate Seal, but BLG will happily take the triple for Elk. And just like that, it crumbles in PSG's fingers. It almost turns to dust. A triple kill for Elk is huge. That almost brings them back to gold parity. Still a lead for PSG, but 
you have to be so careful when over chasing into the jungle like that into so much aoe the idea was there but the execution was off yeah, going into those tiny corridors is just perfect for the blg composition and psg pay the price bin still relatively low and i just snuck in here but there's so many members of blg collapsing Jun cleared out the ward see on on his way up as well tpe coming in as psg well, they're not going to do anything to help out Azure here. He's dead. Knight takes it. BLG will get the push in the top side, and that gold is even now. And that was just good timing from BLG. You could look at the rest of the map, and PSG hadn't set up their waves to really be a threat anywhere. There's still a slow push on bot side for Maple, and that wave disintegrated for Betty. So BLG getting time alone with this turret. Maybe in a position to match on towards this uh, top, our bot side play, but will still be first tower, I believe, for PSG. No, I think I think the OG take it. They oh, have they demolished, will, yeah. right? They have three right. people in the demolish from Bin. They should be able to take this one first. Maple trying to match, as you say, on the bottom side, but BOG with the TP in. Invests a lot to make sure they f take the first turret. And it does give them that gold infusion that they were looking for. Yeah, BLG, you can't make mistakes against them like that very frequently. They immediately take control on the map. Offensively up to the top side, steal away the red buff <laughs> in addition to that top tower and just chaining the objectives here. This is well ahead of the timer for the Dragon too, so uh, they can even match up for that as well. You can see the flip on the Mastercard lane economy snapshot when it comes towards the gold, but PSG want to flip this objective as well. Bin has no teleport, so the fact that Aja has walked here and BLG see Aja here, uh, they should know. All right, fine. Uh, PSG, you have the numbers. We're just going to keep bin splitting on bottom side. You can have a Rift Herald, uh, which will at least be a nice takeaway. Yeah, get more gold back for bin, who is 24 CS down, as expected in a range into melee matchup in the top lane that was left to its own devices. But he's only about 250 gold out of pocket right now. Woody looking towards top lane, though. Knight does have that between worlds in his flash. Probably about 10 seconds away from coming off cooldown. He'll respect it and back away. Because of that, uh, PSG should just be able to secure the tower. Knight might come back, though. Wonder, is he going to step forward? They don't have vision. He's just waiting in the wings. Yeah, I think he's respecting it. On it reset, shun it reset. And it actually started to shift kind of over towards mid to cover that mid lane play. So it's a nice read from PSG. And Knight just not wanting to give over that little bit more. We'll just stick in the bush and pick up this wave as it crashes. But look at the quick move. Rift Herald and Toe, they're going to try and crack mid lane for this as PSG. The Drake up. You can see Azure's actually crept through the darkness in that bot side jungle to apply a bit of pressure with the flank. He'll catch out Shun, who goes into that decoy. Helps the clone. The Rift Hell did get a charge down. Quite, can't quite take the tower, but it does get mid prior for PSG. There's a second Drake afoot if they decide that is their priority. Maple has TP. Knight doesn't, so Maple kind of hiding out, seeing if he can wait until Knight disappears so we can put threat onto the tier two, while also keeping threat on towards Dragon. PSG playing at the map well right now. BLG now have a bloodthirster and a BF sword on Elk. He was so far delayed in this game. Now even Stevens in terms of gold with Betty. And if he is left at the back of a fight with no one threatening him, he is just going to rip you to shreds. He'd like playing Enter the Gungeon, but in League of Legends, just dodging every bullet you can. Another big pivotal thing to look at in the setup for the next team fight is who will mark this cannon? Always so big, especially when the cannon does have flash. The the effect of the flank uh, coming in for the big team fight, and BLG have a lot of members that could do it. As Maple's making his escape here, on still chasing them. Yeah, it really felt like they just wanted the ultimate out of him, right? It means that if you are going to fight around something, it becomes a bit easier. Make him burn that, has to wait for the cooldown, but PSG will use the fact that On is on the top side of the map to start themselves up a dragon. That's what I was going to say is, what is that something, right, for BLG? Because there's no top tower to really put pressure onto. PSG are still holding on towards mid. They have push on boss, so it kind of was like a Hail Mary, it feels like, nearly for BLG to hope they could cross map something. But I think you're pretty happy as PSG that you get everything there for just Maple's ult, which is three quarters of the way, or sorry, about a third of the way done. It's always interesting when a game gets to this sort of point relatively, even two Drakes to PSG, a slight gold lead as well. And then you look at the comps, it's like, can't really tell who scales better. It really comes down to execution, right? Like if Azure gets in without being exhausted, obviously he's going to rip through BLG. If the MF ult gets off and hits three people, obviously Elk's going to... But they're always the most important, right? Where you just yeah. get to see everything thrown in the kitchen sink and see who comes out on top. And I know, you know, Yone's got the magnifying glass on him for the whole tournament, but I'm truly looking at Betty. Uh, and you guys were both uh, correctly so, giving him so much praise 
or earlier, I really think, you know, he's a position with Cleanse Flash Ezreal uh, to be able to now. Oh, the ultimate down the now wave. for Aja. He gets the wave. Yeah, and because of that, they decide not to dive. Meanwhile, in the top lane, look at the pressure PSG are putting on TP from Knight away from the wave. PSG should be able to get the tier two here, but they might sacrifice their tier one in mid for it. Elk opens up on the tower, takes it, and the tier two will be exchanged. BLG deciding that they couldn't defend anyway, and so they want to make sure they open up the map. And it's not a bad idea. You do get two towers there for it, so at least it's something. True. But in the grand scheme of things, PSG Talon are still up in towers there, getting more gold. So it's a great spot for them to be in, and a huge amount of that obviously going in towards the hands of Maple, going to help out with the fact he's nearly 800 gold lead for himself in that mid lane now. And the towers on Summoner's Rift are not all created equal. The outer ones are only 500 gold for your team. The secondary ones are 800 gold for your team. Plus, there's an added benefit of the secondary ones are more funneled gold because more of it is local. Um, so you get like more concentrated power. And what better place to concentrate <laughs> that power? 100% true. But I will say, if we're going down this Animal Farm route, <laughs> I feel like the mid lane towers are quite important as well. Now that PSG have managed to get one in response, obviously that's great. But they do open up a lot more avenues to get into the enemy jungle and to actually create these pockets of darkness, pockets of vision that you can play around. I think you do need a lot of control on the map to try and make get value out of that, right? Yep. And obviously, B BLG are doing a good job of setting that up at the moment. but. Azure still has good push against Bin. He's in a decent spot. And Maple is a massive threat on side lanes against people like Knight. So the windows of opportunity for BLG to really punish this are tough. I think it's more of a case we're going to need to wait and see if how this next uh, team fight turns out at Dragon. So then that vision could maybe be established by BLG. Otherwise, PSG just get to continue to play outsides in their favor. All right. Well, that side lane focus tower gold actually completed a stride breaker for True. Maple. Okay, you're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> you, the, 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 the top lane tier two is more equal than the others. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the the power of concentrating uh, gold in in any MOBA, honestly, uh, is it, just so so big. So we'll see what Maple can do do with it. Of course, we were talking about the setup too of uh, you know his interview and, and possibly even being his kind of last stance here would be a banger oh. if they were able to pull off a really big upset. Yeah, what a lot of it would be. Around since 2013 on Gamina Bears, all the way back in the, the age of yore, you have to feel, and it comes to uh, modern League of Legends, has been so consistently on top team, so consistently challenging at World Championships. It would be a, an incredible performance by him if he is able to make it to the quarterfinals, obviously, alongside his compatriots on PSG. The game's still relatively even, though. We talk about it uh, with a slight PSG tinted glasses because they are slightly ahead because they do have this Yone and this Ezreal and so much power in their comp. But BRG can definitely fight back from anywhere. On court out will burn the flash. Trades it for that Glacial Prison. Solar Flare coming back onto Woody, who has a flash of his own and won't burn it in response. They're just ever going to back away from the moment. But yeah, I think, as you say, the. PSG to be able to take down BLG, just the number one seed, everyone who was expecting to be an absolute beast. But even for uh, Maple as well, like he got replaced by Knight on, I oh, sorry, replaced Knight on Sooning back in the day as well, which was just kind of like a big kind of talking point where people were like, oh, we're getting Maple in. He's been such a stellar mid laner for us. But Knight then kind of moving on to bigger and better things on top esports as well. So I think there is definitely a little bit of a friendly rivalry between the two mid laners as well. Very much agree. For the moment though, Although it is a slower game, there has been a lot to talk about. We've had a lot of trading across the map. My expectation is things might speed up in the next 20 seconds or so, lads, because there's a Drake on the cards and it would be sole point for PSG if they can find it. Yeah, and I agree. And on the side of BLG, they were like, all right, we don't want to fight into your two item power spike before yep. we get our two items. Uh, you know, that's that's not fair. So they want to delay a little bit. They want to uh, wait until they can catch up in inventory here. One to remember, time. On did burn his flash towards the top side. Does have the solar flare back in one second's time. Now it's up. PSG start the Drake. BLG looking for an avenue to approach. Bin looking to reset and get a TP in. Maple going to that Gromp to stack up his Q3. PSG still fighting over this dragon. TP coming in from Azure as well. He's just finished the Shadow Flame. Two items on the Ken and Bin will TP to the control ward down towards the top side Azure's of the, the fight. Jun is in the pit. Azure is behind them. There's a control ward there. Betty putting damage into the on right now, Jun going in with the Cyclone onto the back line, finds Maple but doesn't find Betty. Azure and PSG will disengage the fight, Jun has to flash the wall, but he's locked up with his fate sealed. Bin now in the pit, trying to fight, battle against Jun Jun and Maple, but BLG are all retreating. Will PSG look for more? 
Azure has the flash, has the slicing motion, but PSG decide that's enough. We got Soul Point and now perhaps the Baron as well. The patience from PSG there was so beautiful. Their setup was way, way better with Aja teleporting in and coming on, on onto the backside of the deep wall. fight. I mean, he, he had such an amazing possible flank <laughs> that they all have to run. They get completely chased off and, and BLG just end up separated. PSG, they're on Baron. In the last team fight, they divide and conquer. Can they just get this objective? Abin uses the hex it's to there to see the information. Woody diving in, and he stops Alp from putting on the bullet time. The slicing mouse from on the back line as well. Knights in the pit, but Maple puts him in the dirt. Bin now going in for a little bit more. We can't let the counter strike onto Maple. <laughs> Another is down on his fallen PSG. Are somehow beating BLG. They're running circles around them. Divide and conquer again, right over the wall. And Maple comes up huge. They get the Baron and they get the team fight. And Bin goes over trying to see if he can get into a position to come into the pit, but it's so well played by Aja. He never used this uh, Storm in the last fight. He just stood there menacing as this mouse. And then as he comes into this, interrupts Elk. The weirding doesn't do enough. Betty barely survives in the back line as well. The smallest thing, the between worlds wasn't quite far enough away from where Elk was ulting to stop the crash down hitting him. As soon as Woody hit him with the crash down, he gets bounced back by that wall. We're talking a matter of like two seconds centimeters there. And Betty evading the Leona ultimate on the edge of the Aurora ultimate on the edge of the misfortune ultimate. So much for PSG off the back of this though. Now they can just take over. They're at three dragons. They have control of the entire rift right now. And they got the stun as well onto Elk who has the flash and will use it to dash away from any follow-up engaged. Sun going in with the Cyclone, trying to make a hurricane rip through PSG. They'll find one already. Jun stunned up. Azure flashing away from the Soul Affair. All the while, Betty and Maple were pushing in the bot side. They take a tier two. Maple looks for a little bit more. On lands the stun with the Shield of Daybreak. The weirding out from Knight for a little bit of damage as well. True shot barrage between the uprights of On and Knight, but still clips Shun's heels. The Baron remains for the next minute and 20 seconds for PSG, but right now they've called off the push. And now it's three items on towards Betty. He's going to be able to reset and get even more. Look at the goal difference. Powered by AWS at the bottom of your screen. PSG have been playing immaculately in this. And with two and a half minutes now until this sole potential for PSG talent, they just push outside. They take this nice and slow. They deny BLG access. And this should be a game win for PSG talent. PSG pushed BLG to the edge at MSI. It was the full five games there, getting into winning positions in some of the other games as well. And they're not going to let this one go lightly right now. A huge winning position for them. Uh, and because they have the Baron buff, it also makes it easier to reset up. Maple it looks like he's just going to finish off the red buff before he joins the rest of the squad, but uh, still the easy setup uh, with their split. I also think for a lot of people, this was kind of what they were hoping to see from PSG talent. When they came into the play-ins, a lot of teams disappointed with their performance where they didn't look as clean as they possibly could have but yeah oh here cyclone again from shun true shot barrage coming out from betty as well between well shun just locked up in it he'll flash across on falling low 200 hp on him now as betty looks to open up fate sealed the slicing mouse from coming in too shun's down bins down on's down and blg are up it's only knight and elk left alive can they defend against psg the tp is going to come in from azure the bullet time to clear the wave and that might just be enough there's another wave on its way 10 seconds from hitting onto the inhibitor tower the 27 seconds on shun Knight starting to back away. One inhibitor seems to be the prize PSG get for winning that fight. Elk and Knight will try and defend at the Nexus Towers and PSG probably won't push for more. They don't invest the TB from Azure. They will retreat after finding that inhib and a 7,000 gold lead for the PCS number one seed. It is not just PSG pushing BLG. They are dismantling this team. The only good BLG play was actually the mess up of PSG Red Invade. That's the only benefit they actually had in this whole game. PSG have been running it from head to toe. Let's take another look at this. Even with the Sejuani ultimate, uh, not able to find the full chase here. And because On was on the other side, this Ezreal just takes them down. They have, they have no further openings here. No possibility of even escape there on the side of BLG. They're just so far behind now, completely out-itemized. They, they're the ones that have to pull out the surprise play. 
I think a lot of people forget that this TP was... Behind. Oh, hang on, TP yeah, behind. Woody's going to be engaged on here, but On is now in the meat grinder. Maple goes in with the face sealed, and Azure is just waiting for his opportunity to open up. Bin's taken one. The Slicing Maelstrom will find another, though. Betty being chased out by Shun. He'll flash away. Shun dies to Betty, and Betty survives. Bin diving in onto Maple, who can unbind his soul and then dash back. Ginger trying to keep the dragon aggro for now. Maple. Put into the dirt by Bin. PSG still have two alive. Elk's going to try and keep the dragon aggro, but Betty can do a lot of work from a lot of range right now. Elk has the bullet time coming up in seven seconds. Junja trying to heal himself back up in the jungle. Elk there makes it rain. Bin going to try and get for the reset. Elk still full HP. Bullet time, no flash, no... Well, it has the flash, but no cleanse. Bin TP's in. Junja's looking for it. And Elk oh, finds oh. one. The shutdown. He'll find another great cleanse from Elk. Junja able to survive. Oh, but Bin God. will take the Drake, the soul. Not quite, but PSG. Bin wins those. Oh, my goodness. He wins the 1v1 with Maple on Yone up on the top side of the map. He teleports back. He's actually able to finish it off and deny the Dragon soul. BLG will not go out without a fight. This was such a close fight, though. Maple ends up getting on towards two here, but they not able to catch Elk out with that initial ult for Maple. Aja, this ultimate doesn't connect onto many people either. It's a little bit too early. And then Elk is in a position where he's able to continuously kite away from the crucial members of PSG. Bin finishes off Maple, and Elk is just chasing out PSG from this pit. It's a couple of just barely missed ultimates onto the key members of BLG that put PSG back in their place. What a tense one here with Jinji and Betty lying in wait over the top of this wall, trying to get the burst damage. But not only is it a deny of the Dragon Soul, there's a thousand gold shutdown into the pockets of Elk in the attempt to acquire that soul for themselves. On a knife edge is putting it lightly here. Still a 5,000 gold lead for PSG, but four minutes on the clock for BLG to recuperate, to wait out. They can. Continue to delay the game. PSG trying to gain control of this top side. Baron, their call. Azure, no TP. Is now resetting after pushing out bot. Back to my early point on the comps as far as Betty's you know, position in the overall game too. I still have a lot of faith in PSG, even with this like slight speed bump that they have run into. Uh, as soon as he gets his summoner spells back, it is just so hard for this BLG setup to actually put the necessary pressure on the Ezreal. Uh, and up until that point, you know, he had been deathless. He had basically been the king of the map. That thousand gold, though, we'll see if that actually ends up paying off there for BLG. I mean, it's four items on Elk now. Mm -hmm. Hasn't gone for the upgraded boots. Don't really need them on MF because you have that strut on. That solar flare was a mile wide. On, gets caught with the Glacial Prison, has no flash, has the exhaust, will get away for now. The world's between as Woody trying to escape, but he's just burst out by Elk. Those four items coming to the fore for BLG. A Cyclone onto Ginger, who has the flash Big. as well. The bullet time comes out, the Slicing Maelstrom, as Bin is trying to dive across them. Betty and Maple, the only two left alive for PSG. Maple will flash, but the bullet still finds his back. BLG win the fight. PSG were so close, but these last few fights, BLG have been able to outmatch them in the team fight and now it's Baron for the LPL for a seed. Huge pick right there. Maybe it was a caster curse. BLG looking like they are on the warpath. Another objective bounty on top of it. A lot of bounty gold, both objective and champion going the way of BLG. Huge, huge comeback swing available in the last couple of plays. And a bunch of tiers who's still for them to take. You can see the goal basically even, about 800 between the two now. After On missed this, I thought PSG had a way into the fight. They catch out On, but he's able to escape. They don't really have the CC follow-up. And then this between worlds is just so devastating for PSG. Yeah, especially since it denies Maple access to the fight. He went with the soul back towards the original starting point, which meant he couldn't get involved. The ult here as well, just barely denying Azure access to Elk once again means he gets the full unleash of the bullet time and is able to rip through them. And you can see there for PLG Lumo laughing a little bit. He knows he's getting away with this one. Oof, yeah, BLG fighting their way out of a very tough spot in this game. Now they're the ones with the push available though. You mentioned all the, the towers and the standing gold here available on the map. Let's see if they can close in and get it, because I was just trying to find a, a way for a flank. You know, this Kennen 
uh, constantly looking for the devastating flank. But On has his exhaust ready. So goal number one for BLG, On, mark the cannon. Always be on the same side as the cannon. You can keep him out. There's no flash on the cannon. So it honestly should be pretty easy uh, for BLG to avoid that devastating flank. Yeah, I think if you're PSG, you just sack a couple of towers. You try and put up a little bit of a front, but it's more of a game face than anything else, right? Especially with the waves crashing at the same time. Cannon in the bot lane still harassing that tower down. Mid lane turret is taken by BLG. The gold swings in their favor for the first time in a long time in this game. I think there is an angle for PSG, though, to create pressure on this top side. You already look at where Maple is. 30 seconds until Dragon. BLG have to respond to this because it's an open inhibitor. So uh, you can see BLG aren't going to be able to use this Baron buff to crack the turret with a minute left on it. You have to get Dragon, you have to clear a top wave. So PSG, they forgo the outer turrets, but they hold on to what are the important ones in the grand scheme of things. Oh, BLG setting up something here. Junja able to dodge away from On, puts the Glacial Prism back in him. Down to half HP, the Mystic shots from Benny and On is off. Benny now locked in the pit with Knight, but do you really want to be locked in there with him? The TP in from Azure as well, looking at that slicing mushroom. Remember, there's no exhaust as well, because On is down. No flash for Azure, but the Drake up and Soul on the cards for PSG if they can find it. TP behind by Bin as they're looking for the pincer movement. PSG trying to get the push through mid through Maple. Bin still looking for that flank. Woody's going to try and mark him. They see him. The counter strike goes in. The bullet time as well. Azure's ripped to pieces. Fate sealed from Maple isn't enough. Bin diving onto Woody, and that's two. Betty Forced away, has to dash away from Shun, and Bin is just doing so much work on the back line. It's a double for Elk. The flank sublime from BLG. At the end of the day, it's Bin Jax in back-to-back -back dragon fights. He gets the job done, and with the Baron buff, BLG are inside the base. And it just helps that Elk so much. The bullet time is perfect. The flash away from the Yone ult as well. Elk needed to be that follow-up and damage and he's putting PSG down. It's Betty's time to shine. He opens up on Elk, who tanks the tower. Bin going in with a counter-strike as well. They'll just take one Nexus turret for now, but Betty gets the slow. Knight goes in, and Betty dashes away. He can't survive the weirding. Puts him six feet under, and now BLG will open up on the second Nexus tower. Woody going back in, looking for Bin again, but Bin somehow still survives. PSG wiped away under their Nexus towers. Azure spawns just in time to watch the Nexus fall.